Well, good evening. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church. And uh, tonight, Brother Tommy will be bringing us a little short message, and and uh, Brother Dale will be sharing some things. He said he always has some filler, so he'll be coming up. Amen. Because I am totally unprepared tonight. Amen. Yeah. I had to work today, and I wanted to get off early so I could get back in the on the uh, subject I wanted to preach on. And anyway, at the last minute, people came in, and one thing led to another. By the time I got home, it was after 6.30. So uh, here I am, totally unprepared. But I'm glad I got two people here that are prepared. Amen. Pray for us there, Brother Dave. Brother Danny Mallory called today, and he was feeling a little sick from the chemo. But uh, anyway, he appreciates the continual prayers. And and Johnny uh, Gant, I hadn't heard. I can't get a hold of him. I don't. They, last I heard was hospice was coming in. So I don't know what's going on. I might have to ride by there. Amen. So pray for them. And saw Brother Raj the other day, Monday, through the window. And uh, I didn't, I thought you had to go like a phone in a prison or something. I didn't know you could just sit on the front porch and talk on your own phone. And uh, so we had a good time. We got him laughing. Hey, Amen. He just said I wasn't right. <laughs> Brother Dave, go ahead. Lord, my God, we say, Lord, we again do thank you for this day, Lord God. We do thank you for the good weather and Lord God, that you can tell autumn is is on the way, Lord, and Father, uh, that uh, the weather reflects it here in the south is usually still hot by this time of the year, and Lord, it's it's starting to cool down, and that's a that's a good change. And Father, we do have some prayer requests, Lord God, for the for the men that uh, Pastor just mentioned there, the John Gant and uh, and uh, Danny Mallory, Lord God, and. Father, we anointed Danny the other, the other month, the Lord, uh, with, uh, with the anointing oil and, and prayed uh, the prayer in the Bible, Lord God, that uh, you said that if uh, we had a effectual, fervent prayer, Lord God, that uh, you'd hear our prayer and, and heal that man, and we're still looking for you to do that for us, Lord, and I know that he is too, Lord, and Father, we, we're looking to you for each and everything all things in all of our lives, Lord God. And tonight, Lord God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, you'll be you'll be lifted up, that uh, that uh, you'll get all the glory and honor tonight in the preaching of Thy Word and the Scripture reading, Lord. And Father, that uh, your people will be helped and strengthened, Lord God. And Father, to carry us on through these these vile and wicked days that we're experiencing, Lord. And I do pray for each and every one here, Lord God, that, uh, that Father, that uh, you'll keep the coronavirus away from all of us, Lord, and all of our family members and the other people we have contact with, Lord God, and keep it far from us, keep us all healthy, Lord, and keep us on our knees and in our Bibles, and we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you and praise in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, one of our former customers was Wilkie, uh, Bart Carr. He called today and gave us some information and number. But he says, I've been watching y'all, you and Tommy on Facebook. He says, y'all getting famous. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a blessing that, you know, the other folks are watching. Not all the time. We don't see them on there, but they're, they're watching. And uh, I come home Tuesday night. I flipped uh, Fox on while I was getting ready for the Facebook, and I, was that Martha McCollum or something? And she's one of them news pe girls on Fox, and she was interviewing Pete Butmachek. Amen. The <laughs> old president, one that ran for president. And uh, I said, that soft soap, limp wrist, sodomite. Uh, he's out there talking about recruit. Trump professes to be a Christian, and he was paying prostitutes. And I thought, you saw so Sodoma, <laughs> you got a lot of nerve. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of people who mess with prostitutes in the Bible, but 
and uh, they didn't get their cities destroyed, but them fags sure did, amen. <laughs> Wiped out them Saudis, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, I said, she, oh gosh, gag a maggot for sure off a gut wagon. Amen. All right, you have a song you said, huh? All right. Well, come up here and do your singy wingy. kings and priests amen thank, thank the lord for jesus man that's just such a blessing i was just thinking about that how the lord just pulled me out of that dung hill and made me a new creature in christ jesus and he can do that for you too each and every one anybody who wants to receive him as their lord and savior be born again the bible said you must be born again and you know it's such a blessing. Today was a good. Uh, it was a good day down in Augusta. Got to talk to some people about the Lord. You know, not all the time do I get to do that. But it, the guy come to me. It was really a blessing. And so we got sit there and talked. And it, so I just thanked the Lord. And I told him how because he was about to get married. And I said, you know, the Lord sent me my wife. And and he believes that the Lord sent him this lady. He's had some bad things and all, but. Come find out. He's he said he's been born again. He's saved and saved by grace. And I and he said he's trying to reach his dad. And he was telling me his dad thinks he's a good guy. And I said yeah, he's not the only one. I said that was me in the beginning. I thought I was all right as long as I could do six of the ten. How many times have I ever heard that? I'm a good guy. I've heard it from a lot of people. And his dad he said Tommy, I just don't know how to talk to him. I said pray. He said I told him to get his Bible and start reading. And I said, well, there's nothing else you can do. Let the Lord do the work, because that's what uh, God wants to do. He wants to work in everybody's lives, and he wants to see the people's lives change. He wants to see them turn to him, see the need. Let them me that I seen the need that I had. I told him that day when I left his church. I got to tell him that story, and he said, man, that's just awesome. And he just kept sitting there saying, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, you know. And I said, yeah, glory to God. And then another guy comes in, and he said, pray, he saw sitting at the table breakfast. He said, praise the Lord. He said, it's, it's, I reckon something happened two weeks ago. He said, Tommy, my life has changed. And it was good. So I had a wonderful day. 
and I just want to lift up the Lord. That's what we're here to do. We're supposed to be to glorify the Lord. And what's really good, like I said, I'm studying and I'm reading here, and I was in Isaiah on um, on Sunday during a little Sunday school class. I started and didn't get to finish everything. So it was a blessing. I'm going to come up here tonight. The Lord's allowed me to knew the pastor what you know, to be able to come up and preach, and I could finish reading what the Lord put on my heart and where I was at. And I was in Isaiah chapter 55. So we can turn there tonight. Amen. And I started off, I only made like three verses. Everybody knows that. I made my first three. Ho, getting everybody's attention. And that's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to get your attention. And a lot of people just tell you, it just don't, it just don't register. But it doesn't matter. As long as the Lord got my attention and I turned, I repented, I realized what I was, a lost sinner. I realized it wasn't nothing I could do. It's everything that he did. But people just still think it's a, a, a work salvation. And, and that's what I was telling the guy down in Augusta. And he said, yeah, he said, I, I try to tell my dad. He goes, he goes, hey, you know, doing good things, buying these things, doing things for their church. He goes, I try to tell him it's not like that. It's not. I said, uh, of course, the works are going to come with it because it's something now my life has changed. I want to do other things that's it's just changed. It's different. People go, man, you're, you're totally different. Well, yes, I am. And it ain't because of anything I did. It's what what did Jesus come in. He changed me, made me that new creature. It's everything he did. But so many times we can't get that grasp on it. We want to be the center of attention. We want to get all the glory. Have you ever noticed a lot of people, they want the glory. They want to be patted on the back for something they did not do, did not even, all they, they had no control. That's usually the first signs of a lost person. But, I mean, I, I hate to tell, you know, tell some people that they they just been deceived they think they can do good they can't but i so let, let's start i'm gonna start over real real quick here i'm gonna go back to verse one it says ho in isaiah 55 y'all out there ho listen now it says ho everyone that thirsts ho huh Calling us a hope. I, hey, I know I got the meaning of that because anybody <laughs> want to use it for a different? It says use especially to attract attention to something specific. That's what the word of this means now for the people that want to do something different to it, pervert it maybe. Okay, so we're just gonna say that's to me what God means here when He's hollering. Hey, got Isaiah out there hollering ho. He's trying to get somebody's attention. No matter how He gets your attention, He's trying to draw you to look. Come over here. I want you to hear me because I have something that the Lord gave me to tell you, to say. The Lord's speaking through. And he says, ho, he said, everyone that thirsteth, everyone that thirsteth, that, that wants something, that really needs it, that's thirsty. And it says, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy. Hey, check that out. How are you going to come and buy? What's it mean, come to the waters and buy? Come eat and buy. You just said come. You didn't say anything. I'm going to pay anything because it's already been paid for. Jesus paid. It was all nailed to the cross. People just don't understand that. They think they can buy their way into things. Buy their way out of things. And it says, and eat, yea. It says, come, buy wine and milk. With right, Check this out. Here it is. Got to read the whole, without money and without price. Well, Jesus paid the price for us. So we can have salvation through him for what he did for us. For everyone that, that wants, that, that, that believes and receives and comes. He says come as you are. He don't say stay as you are either, though. A lot of people want to stay the way they, they, they came. You ever notice that? They come in and say, okay, I'm good. And they run out. Like I said, Pastor said at one time he had somebody said a, made a profession after a toe dancing, toe tapping, and all that other stuff. Got that feel good religion? That don't work. That that disappears real quick. I seen it I, when I was lost. I seen all these people making professions, tell me they were Christians, but they were living like the world. So I was thinking, why do I want that? Amen. Why would I even want anything like that? Well, God don't want us to be that way. When he, when he calls, once you receive him, you change. And then right here, though, this is an invitation of salvation. He's calling for people to come. 
It's free. It's already been paid for. He's trying to tell you, hey, listen to me. Oh, listen, come listen. And it says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? It says, and your, la you, your labor for that which satisfies not. You can do all this, but it doesn't satisfy. You can buy brand new cars. Pastor says it all the time. You hear it. Cars, uh, you can get lots of money. All the same, it never really truly satisfies. Just like me sometimes for ice cream. I eat a little scoop. It ain't satisfying enough. I got to eat the whole jug. <laughs> you know? But that's just the way it is. I mean, you, you're looking for something to satisfy, but you never truly get satisfied. Jesus Christ comes in. You can get satisfied, and you can have that delight if you go and open his word and apply it to your life. Amen. And that's what we're missing. His word is so important. He's trying to tell us his word is important. He wants us to listen. Come. Apply. And then uh, it says, Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. He wants you to eat what's good? His word. Amen. His word. Applying his word, obeying his word is what's good. That's the food, the soul-pleasing food, the one that's going to really delight you. And get you through the week, the day. God, He pulls you through it through His Word, though. You can go out and live where you want, but if you are, if you're doing it contrary to God's Word, you're not satisfied. You're not getting that full, full meal Amen. that we need to get all the vitamins and everything to nourish the body. Well, our soul has to be nourished, and only through His Word we're gonna get it. Amen. Amen. And it says, "Incline your ear and come unto Me here." And your soul shall live. Your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Look at all the things. He was merciful to David. Look what David did, the, the bad side. But God was so merciful. And if he's going to make a covenant with David, do you think he wouldn't do it with us? If we receive him, obey him, and give us all that full delight, that we need, because he knows we need this. He's not telling you, to, oh, just you know, eat what you want and you'll be all right. He's wanting you to have that delight. He wants you to be fat. He wants to be full with his word. He wants you to be enriched with his word. And it says, verse 4, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader a command and commander to the people. Behold, God, you, you know what? David didn't go through. God appointed David. He put David where he was at. He put him in that position. Man wants to put their self in position. Well, God put, put David where he was. Amen. You know how much trouble, how, many, how much other things outside that uh, the people, could, the ones that hated him. You know, people had to hate David. There were people there that wanted to see him dead. But God appointed him, put him there to be a ruler, a commander, a leader for these people for a reason. Because David was a man after God's own heart. Did you know that? David might have messed up, but David loved God. And that's what he expects of us. These born again, us born again Christians. He expects us to love him, seek him. It says, verse 5, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. People's going to see us, witness, be, be a witness, a testimony to the Lord. Maybe it might draw those people, the ones that we talk about we love so much, the lost people. It might draw them. Maybe they won't, maybe they'll get thirsty. And maybe God could speak to their heart. Like I said, we can't lead, we can lead that horse to water. We can't make them drink. But we're people, born again Christians, we're to lead people, be a leader unto the Lord for other people to come. And the Bible says for us to be ready to give an answer also. So you got to remember that. If you haven't been studied up, you can go up here and tell everybody you love the Lord and all, and then you can't answer them when they ask you a question. There's a problem. You had not delighted yourself in God's word. You had not filled yourself. You haven't took that full meal. You know, like babes, they talk about the babes, newborn babes desire sincere milk. Well, 
we're supposed to be desiring God's word daily, not once a week. So we can tell other people what he did for us. We don't have to beat them down. Like when I first got saved, I thought you had to beat them down with the Bible. No. We All we have to do is show them what he did by being a witness and a testimony unto the Lord. Show them what he did for me. I don't have to go tell you what he did, but I can be that witness and that testimony. When I walk, my walk, my talk and all, as of what the Lord would have me to do. Walk the way he would have me walk. Not as I would want to walk. Verse 6, here you go. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, there's going to be one day he's not going to be out there for these lost people. It's going to be all over. It's going to be nothing but judgment. And, so, and then is it going to be uh, our fault, the Christians' fault, that he's not there for them anymore because we wasn't there to be a witness and testimony to lead them in? Like I said, you can lead a horse to water. Can't make him drink. But I tell you what, your testimony can sure make him want some of that. Let the wicked forsake his way and the, and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. You see that? The Lord have mercy upon anybody because he's been so merciful for me from day one. He did it to David. He'd do it for us. And it says, And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For Here you go. This is the Lord. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the, the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. You get that? Everything the Lord does is his way over us. He is our creator. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning was the word. So if all these things, you got to start putting them together. So he wants us to study his word. He wants us to know that he's in control for us to be seeking what he wants. That means get in your Bible. Get in his word. Believe it. Don't sit there and try to pick it apart. Like a lot of people do, because I've been hearing that a lot on some things. But don't don't sit there and pick it apart. Believe it and just do it. And it says, and my thoughts and your thoughts. It says, here you go. Here's, here's the verses I wanted to get to. And he says in verse 10, for as the, the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God's comparing his word to water and snow. What's water do? It waters your crops, makes things grow. What's snow do, Pastor? Fertilizes. Fertilize. Oh, my goodness. That hit me so hard when I started reading that. Amen. God's word is what? It's fertilizer. For them that thirst come. And his word's not going to come back forward to him. <laughs> and it says in verse 11, and it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, his word, God's word right here, says, It shall not return to me void, but it shall, put your little underline, accomplish, get that, that which I please. God's word accomplishes something. When he set, sets it out, there's a reason, there's a purpose. There's a reason that we have his word. That's why he expects us to be obedient to it, to read it, study it, and apply. A lot of people want to read, and it just goes in and out, Dale. They don't want to apply it because they said, no, I got to change something. I can't live that. I got to get this out of my life. They don't want to do that. That's why I say, it says examine yourselves. Check yourself. See where you're really at. The fruit that you're supposed to be bearing. Are you, have you bear any fruit? Is it all dried up raisins? I don't know. What's it doing? Is it just dried up and gone? Nothing. I, and I'm saying it says, it says, and it shall prosper 
in the things and see that it shall prosper in the things where where to i send it god's word comes in you obey his word apply it to your life your life changes things change you might even see your loved one saved maybe they'll thirst maybe they'll want to come in <clears throat> maybe they'll want what you have so it's something to think about in second timothy i wrote down a few other scriptures here we're going to look at this real quick second timothy chapter 3 16 we all we hear this verse a lot when that's a lot we just hear it and it says second timothy 3 16 says all scripture now that's capital all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. It's to apply it to change us, to make us start walking, talking, and being what God wanted us to be, wants us to be. He, he tells us, he tells us how to walk, talk, and act for a reason. His word comes out, it's supposed to change you. You want you to apply it to your life. Then I wrote down another thing God's word is. And John 6, we're just going to hit a couple of scripture real quick. 663, you know, God's word is also life. And it says, it is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak, you hear that? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they, and they are life. God's words are life. They're supposed to, they, they, they change your life. But people don't want, don't see his words. They, they just, just, uh, they'll read over his words. And then in, let's see, I wrote down Psalms 119. I'm just showing you how important it is, what God's word is. And, and it's life to us, it's life to our soul. Psalms 119. And it will be in verse 105, and everyone knows this one too, that reads their Bible and studies God's Word. God's Word is, oh man, I'm way off myself. 119. 105. It says in verse 105, it says, Thy Word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. That's what God's word is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a light. It's supposed to enlighten you. It's supposed to be your everyday walk is with God. It's supposed to be his word comes first. It's supposed to open your eyes to things around you. And we're supposed to be that light. That light's supposed to be shining through us. So this lost world, these people out here, our loved ones, the friends, I mean, people that you don't even know, they look at you, they say, hey, look at that person. Look, they act a little different. Something, something's different about them. Then they might come to know you, want to know you, and then you can give them an answer. Tell them what God did for you. So tonight, I just come up here. I just want to lift up the Lord. I say, Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. Amen. For Amen. everything you've done. Because he did it all. All I had to do was believe it. And that's all you have to do. Believe it. Apply it to your life, and you can have a full life. Amen. That's all I have, Pastor. Amen. Go ahead, big boy. All right. Here we go. Another reason why you need to be ready. And I know it's not. Hello, Concord, independentbaptistchurch.com. Yay! What a beautiful Wednesday evening and Quite to my surprise, I find myself here at the pulpit once again, and uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody out there in the internet, and everybody, all my extended family here at home. And uh, we're going to dive back into the next section of my uh, Sunday School lesson, which comes from The Trail of Blood by J.M. Carroll. Amen. And we... Uh, Sunday, we started 
on uh, page 30, and now we're on page 31. Uh, we're down to number five there, and I got into John Huss, as Brother Carroll called it, and uh, I prefer to call him a little bit Jan Huss. And uh, what's a quick word of prayer before we get going here? Um, most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for a beautiful Wednesday evening. And as Brother Dave said, it's cooled off. It's my kind of weather. And Lord, we give thanks for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us and everything that I have on loan from you, Lord. And Lord, we uh, ask you to look down with mercy and compassion to uh, the prayer list that we all got. And it seems to be getting longer. And throw one in there for my little buddy, Corey Bennett, who uh, is struggling with his leg repair that was a re result of a motorcycle car incident and lord we uh we ask that you give me the the verbal clarity to convey a message which is insightful and meaningful this evening in jesus name i pray amen all right we're going to touch base here on something that i left off last week with uh, jan huss when he was called to the Council of Constance uh, to appear before uh, the three popes, actually, I think were in attendance at this conference, uh, they brought him up and they put him on trial and he had get, been giving a pass to get there that would get him through all of the townships and all of the uh, principalities. but. They did not guarantee him the right to defend himself in church, I mean, in church, in the council. And thus, when he was brought up there, it basically was a case where they read him the charges and they pronounced him guilty. And as they read the charges, they he was a, a Catholic clergyman and he had a outfit on and as they read the charges and pronounced him guilty they would rip off a garment of, or a piece of his clothing they took his rosary beads and i don't know if he was wearing a chapeau or not but they took his hat and ripped his sleeves off and tore his gown off or his frock and thus the term uh, began to stick of someone being defrocked and I guess I left him standing there in his fruit of the looms. <laughs> and then he was hustled off to the stake. And uh, I have to refer back to what my mama always said about making sure your your underpants were clean. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be standing there in your fruit of the looms with soiled underpants. And uh, we'll start here with number six. It says... Next to Jan Hus of Bohemia came a wonderful son wonderful son of Italy, the marvelously eloquent Sabonarola, Rola, another difficult Italian name here. Uh, 1452 to 1498, Huss was burned in 1415. Uh, Savonarola was born 37 years later. He, like Huss, through a, though a devout Catholic, found the leaders of his people, uh, the people of Italy, like those of Bohemia, against all reformation. Uh, but he, by his mighty eloquence, succeeded in an awakening some conscience and securing, uh, so, yeah, securing a considerable following. Uh, Girolamo actually uh, was born into a reasonably wealthy family, and he... Uh, although it wasn't wealthy enough because he fell in love with this young lady and she fell in love with him, but her family would not let them marry because she was better than he was or 
his family was not wealthy enough or they didn't meet the standards. But he had a very bad reaction to this and it sent him off to, to I guess, friar school and to become a Catholic clergy shortly thereafter and I guess prove to the to his was to be uh, in-laws that he was worthy of her. I uh, said uh, he he was uh, very well thought of by the people that were around him and he got very vocal and I have another little piece here on him it says the Italian religious and political reformer Giroli Rolomo Savonarola, easy for me to say, say, Savonarola, uh, was born to a noble family in Fiera, and in 1474 entered the Dominican order at, at Bologna. Bologna. He uh, seems to have preached in 1482 at Florence, but his first trial was a failure in a convent at Berseca, uh, his zeal won, a, won attention. And in 1489, he was recalled to Florence. His second appearance in the pulpit at San Marco, which is a big church there, on the simple and apostasy of the time was a, was a great popular triumph. And by some, he was hailed as an inspired prophet. Under Lorenzo the Magnificent, art and literature had felt the humanist re a revival of the 15th century, whose spirit was utterly at variance with Savonarola, uh, conception of spirituality and Christian morality. Uh, to the adherents of the Medi Medici family, and the Medici family, for those of you who have never probably ever heard of them, they were a like the Rockefellers. They were deeply involved in banking and control of the money supply. And they uh, actually didn't like uh, Girolamo. And, and they were uh, at odds with him from the time he showed up. Uh, say, uh, to the adherents of the Medici, therefore, Savonarola uh, early became an object of suspicion. But till the death of Lorenzo in 1492, his relations with the church were at least not antagonistic. And when in 1493, a reform of the Dominican order in Tuscany was promote, uh, proposed under the Auspice, under his auspices, it was approved by the Pope, and Savonarola was named the first vice general. Uh, but now his preachings began to point plainly to a political revolution as his divinity ordained means for a regeneration of religion and morality, and his pre and he predicted the advent of the French under. Charles the Eighth, whom soon after he welcomed to Florence, and he became a basically a rock star in Florence, and was involved in all the government aspects, and was a little bit of a a temperance uh, leader. He didn't like vices of any type. Uh, It said here, the French, uh, soon, however, the French were compelled to leave Florence and a republic was established of which Savonarola became the, <laughs> the guiding spirit. I'm sorry, I, I practice and practice that and I still can't get it right. Uh, his party, the Weepers, began uh, being completely in the ascendant. The Republic of Florence was to be a Christian commonwealth. And this, everybody out there, this, this is what really brought the world to reveal or revere him. They just love this guy. 
that he was actually bringing the the truth of the gospel of the New Testament in Jesus Christ and was speaking it because he already could speak Greek and Latin. He was speaking it in Italian to the masses and they had not heard much of this. You got to remember most of the people except the few that were educated would sit in these masses and the whole the whole uh, time you're in church, everything is going on in Greek and Latin, and you're not getting a whole lot out of it other than watching the guy. Uh, let's see. Did he, did he, did he, where was I? Uh, of which God was the sole so, uh, so, was the sole sovereign, and his gospel was the law. The most stringent enactments were, were made under the repression of vice and probably gambling was prohibited and the vanities of dress were restrained by summary, uh, uh, some putuary laws. Even the women flocked to the public square to fling down their uh, costliest ornaments and Savonolora's followers made huge bonfires of the vanities. And I never saw the movie, The Bonfire of the Vanities, but uh, I would have to uh, say it had to take uh, some types of uh, parallels to, to what uh, Girolamo was doing here in Venice or, or in Florence. Uh, in 1497 came a sentence of excommunication from Rome and thus precluded from administering the, sac the sacred offices. Savonarola uh, zealously tended to the sick monks during the plague. So he had kind of resided himself at this point to kind of reclude and go back because the plague was going on and acting as a nurse and administering to many of the sick monks. Uh, a second bonfire of the vanities was held in 1498. It led to riots and new elections, and the Medici party came back into power. And uh, Girolamo was, was again ordered to desist from preaching and was fiercely denounced by a Franciscan preacher, Francisco de Pugala. Uh, Dominicans and Franciscans appealed to the uh, imposition of divine providence. Uh, the ordeal uh, the ordeal of fire, but when the trial was to have come off, in April of 1498, difficulties and debases arose, destroying our man's prestige and producing a, a complete revulsion of public feelings. He was brought on trial for falsely claiming to have seen visions and utter prophecies for religious errors, for, sed for sedition. Under torture, he made avowals which he afterwards withdrew. He was declared guilty and the sentence was confirmed by Rome and on May the 23rd of 1498. Uh, this extraordinary man and two Dominican disciples were hanged and burned, still professing to the adherents of the church. So once again, we find uh, more martyrs suffering the penalty of death from the Catholic Church, even though technically they had been Catholic, they just uh, had seen the light and the church still held all the cards and all the power and they used it uh, just relentlessly. And, and once again here, a, another patriarch of ours was uh, put to death and and two of his disciples went along with him. Uh, it says, picking back up here, 
They said, but a, a real reformation in the hierarchy meant absolute ruin of, to the higher ups in that organization. So, so Girolamo, <laughs> as well as Hus, must die. He too was burned at the stake. Uh, all of the uh, all of the eloquent men of that great period, uh, Girolamo. <laughs> possibly stood head and shoulders above all others. That's a little questionable, but he was a very educated man and he had really started a movement there that the Catholic Church had to put a stop to. And uh, they did very summarily. Uh, only those most frequently referred to in history are mentioned here. Uh, Following Italy's golden tongue orator came a man from Switzerland, Zwiggle. Is I think how we pronounce that. Uh, Zwiggy. Zwiggly. Zwiggly. <laughs> okay. Uh, he was born before Savonarola died. He lived from 1484. To 1531, and I'll get that pronunciation pronunciation now, my Sunday, and we will start back up there. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Oh my goodness. Amen, amen. Well, for a small church, I'm glad that there's always people here ready that can come up and do something. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, preach and and to kind of sum it up tonight I, I got from Brother Tommy you know you, you need to seek Lord why he may be found you need to come to the water you need to drink of the water hey man you need to uh, be a testimony so other people see what you have that, that so that they want it and also from Brother Dale you know uh, don't get around any Catholic Inquisitions and keep your panties clean Amen. <laughs> so, I guess that's where we're at. Amen. <laughs> I had a I had a customer come in yesterday. He was Croatian, and uh, anyway, he was so thankful for us to work on this truck and get stuff done, and so glad we were there. And and uh, I got this bottle of vodka that one of the guys found in there camper and it was sitting in the office and uh i noticed the other night when i was on facebook that it was sitting on the shelf <laughs> and i said jasmine get that off of there <laughs> and uh it was during when coronavirus first hit and you couldn't get alcohol or hand sanitizer so we decided we'd all keep it there for open wounds and stuff to wash out wounds you know and it was sitting up there and i had forgotten about it and uh, all of a sudden, I'm looking on Facebook here, and there's a bottle of vodka. And I said, Jasper, move that thing. And I tried to block it to, so he could set it down. And she set it on the floor. So the Croatian guy, he comes in, and he's uh, sitting there, and we're talking. And and uh, he said he was going down to the a ATM and had to do some stuff. Oh, fax a uh, paper that we signed off on him from DOT. And... Uh, Anyway, he comes back up and he sets a 16 pack of beer on the 16 pack of beer. Leave my collar alone. And uh, <laughs> sets it on the chair there. So I'm thinking, all right, you're Croatian. That's over there towards Russia. I said, uh, you want the vodka? <laughs> he said, no, I don't drink. He said, I'm a, uh, what was it? When he was in Croatia and different parts over there, he was a uh, teetotal. A, no, a kayak, row, a, a what? Uh, uh, kayak, kayak, kayak coach. Uh, coach. And uh, and he says he stays in shape. He's a big guy, and uh, he's really nice. And so I gave him a gospel track. And he said, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." He said, "I'm Orthodox Christian. Orthodox Christian." He said, my, my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, He's he was uh, over all the monasteries over there. I said, oh, I said, you know what a monastery is? Oh, no. 
He goes, yeah, it's a place where the monk, I said, no, it's a home for unwed fathers. <laughs> he goes, oh, you make joke. <laughs> he threw a $50 tip on his card. He said, put $50 more on my card. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> We meet some, I had a black fella come in day 70, got a, a prosthetic leg and driving a 84 Kenworth conventional VIT, the old one, amen. He said, I make two trips a week for, for super sod out of Georgia up to Raleigh. And he said, that's all I need. And I said, he had a cane and he was, I saw him walking on his heels. Well, I'm hurting so bad on one heel that I walk on my heels. So I said, you diabetic or something? You walking on your heels? And then that's when he pulled his leg up and said, that's prosthetic. But he had a blood clot. He was out in uh, Midland, Texas, working in oil fields, and he got a real bad pain in his leg. And he said it was, it was so bad. And by the time they figured it out, he went to emergency. By the time they figured it out, they had to take the leg. But uh, he's still out there working, 70 years old, still getting around, eh, Ben? But uh, we meet a lot of different characters up there and give them gospel tracts. He said, yeah, been born again. You know, so had a good time with the customers. Anyway, Brother Steve, dismiss us, please. Chris, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for another Wednesday night, Lord, another time to come out, Lord, uh, fellowship with the brethren, Lord, Lord, to hear more from your word, Lord, just uh, thank you for what we had tonight, Lord God, and I just pray. Lord, for all the prayer requests, Lord. Lord, I just lift up Brother Rod C. to the Lord God and just pray that, uh, Lord, that you help him out, Lord. Lord, the people with cancer, Lord, there's just so many things up there. The Lord, for my mother, tell them to lift her up, Lord. There's a little problem there, too, Lord. For me, but, Lord, I just pray that you keep your hands upon us, Lord, and keep us safe. Lord, we also pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. I just pray that you watch over Benjamin and Netanyahu. Watch over our president. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.